The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. This afternoon, I want to talk briefly on the heart of a man. Talking about the heart of the human being. The human being is a complex being. Because he's created after the image of the undefined God. Now, because we are products of God, we are also complex. The human being is about three persons in one. He is not God, who is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the human being is also a tripartite being, a, a triune being. The human being is a complex person. He is a spirit who has a soul. Within the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. And he lives in a body. So when you when we say someone is dead, you go and find the person lying in state. You see the body. But the spirit, what makes him a living being, is gone. But when a man is not there, he is a spirit. He carries his soul. And they live in a body. So when you see a human being coming with a nose, it is not the real human being. It is the body. What is on the inside, the spirit and the soul, they affect his life. The body just expresses what the soul and the spirit determines. So, the Bible normally talks about the soul and the spirit as the inner man. And sometimes when he puts the spirit and the soul together, he calls it the heart. Are we together? You see, you see me dress like this. This dress is for the body. But it's not for the real human being myself. The inner man. My, my, my heart. My heart. Now the Bible says in Matthew 12, verse 35. Matthew 12, 35. But before then, let me read a more popular verse. Matthew 5, 8. I want you to repeat that after me. Matthew 5, 8. Matthew 5, 8. So let them repeat the English. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they will see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they will see God. And your young kind of, I can kind of, you can't see 
kadi mechi ye. Enshira ni wana wakuma muti ye. Wamo na umbe hune rade. Enshira ni wana wakuma muti ye. Wamo nebe hune rade. No ama ame na yekesi ye. Now there was a day that Jesus said, "These people who worship me with their mouth, but their heart is far away." A brave Jesus Christ who can send me, no I say, "Ye no mo di wa no ena tsumi e ne so wakuma di e wo we chiri chiri." So he is saying that the human being can separate his heart from his actions. Nunti no opeso achira se unipa de se nipa timi a china kuma efini ne ye o. So they are worshiping with their mouth. The body is doing something. But Jesus said their heart is far away. So if you want to see a good person, you wouldn't see it from the physical man. So this is what Jesus said. In Matthew 12, verse 35. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. So, the good man brings good things from the good stored up in him. And an evil man brings out evil things from the evil stored up in him. So the good man is defined by the state of his heart. But it is very difficult to know a man's heart. But there are certain things that you can see and actually try to figure out maybe this is what is in his heart. Jesus said, For out of the heart come evil thoughts. Murder. Adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. So that somebody fornicates, and Jesus said it is from the heart. It's not about the body. But it is from the heart. Somebody steals, and Jesus said it is from the heart. Because every human being will exhibit what is stored up in the heart. You see, you wouldn't think that we will store up evil in our heart. But see, somehow, as we travel on the road of life, we are storing. We pick some from our parents. We pick some from friends. We pick some from schools. We pick some from what we hear and reading. What we view on the television. Now, these things, as we put them in our hearts, if you are putting bad things in your heart, you are storing up bad things in your heart. And the heart is the workshop. Whatever gets in there will be produced. Sometimes you, you, you don't know who you, you, you worry. Ah, why am I doing this? Because I don't want to do this. The problem is the condition of your heart. But the heart becomes more dangerous and gratefully evil when it opens the door for what I love to talk about bitterness to enter. Bitterness to enter. 
If you have some bitterness in you, it's just for the heart that you couldn't understand anything. Some of them, bitterness calls them to sell themselves up, up to evil. But no one was born with bitterness. We acquire bitterness. It comes to us because of what has happened to us. We are bitter because of what someone has said about us. We are bitter because of what somebody did to us. And then when we draw this into our hearts, it spoils the heart. It makes it sick. And it destroys the entire humanity. Hebrews 12 verse 15 says this. Hebrews 12 15. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. And that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. It will cause trouble to you. And it will cause trouble to many people. Now, when you contract this bitter spirit, which is a malady of the human heart, which is a sickness that attacks the human heart, I will give you some symptoms. So you have to sit back and then listen and check whether you have a good heart or a bad heart, whether you are sick of bitterness or otherwise. Don't one one is bitter, such people are full of anger. They always think of revenge. I wouldn't be surprised that there will be some inmates here who are listening to me who are always praying that the day they go out, they will go and revenge. They have unforgiving spirits. Bitterness causes pain. It is sickness. You see, sometimes when you think of the person who did something against you, in the middle of the night, you wake up and you can't sleep. Sometimes people think of this thing and they begin to stamp their feet on the ground. They wish that they could do something to this person. And they tell themselves, if I kill him, if I destroy him, and I'm dead, that's all. That Bitterness causes sleeplessness. People who are bitter, they normally greet with their head like this. When you say good morning, then you do this. It happens between a husband and a wife. It happens between anybody can be bitter. Some people will quell into their shelves. But they won't speak. Now, bitter people have suicidal tendencies. They, sometimes they want to take their life. 
Omunya a conscious of a conscious of a comfort, and I made Timmy Hobon, you make Kumi home. I generally need to be Ben Sankrofon. Others they shy away from people. Crofobi no so the end, sir. Omokran, Omanibe, Wolfia Fufrum. Now they, 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 they separate themselves from people. Now for a much of a wolf in Crofom. Others also become talkative. They are always trying to explain their side of the story. Now, bitter people also keep records of evil. They keep records of evil. This thing happened to me. He did this to me. He did this to me. He did this to me. And they keep them in mind. Sometimes they even write it. They, are, they have a callous heart. They don't care what happens. Now, bitterness breeds rebellion. Most of the wars that is going on in nations and these young people in the jungles who are very rebellious, a lot of them, they have been in that condition or they are in that state because they are bitter. What say, now when your heart is in this condition it will destroy you now even physically it will give you some ailments it can give you some ulcers it can cause your pressure Sometimes it can even make you crazy. Bitter people are always looking for an opportune time to strike. They look for opportunity to strike back. You see, in scripture, the Bible spoke, uh, talks about Herod Antipas who took the wife of his brother Philip. Herodia, the wife, the, the, because John the Baptist spoke against the union, Herodia pressed upon Herod to arrest John the Baptist. And in prison, this woman wanted the husband, the new husband, Herod, to kill John the Baptist. But Herod was afraid to do that because John was very popular and the people revered him. But one day, Herod threw a party to his officials. And Salome, the daughter of Herodia, the wife of Herod, who wants to kill, who wish that John the Baptist were dead, she danced before the crowd. And the dance please Herod. And then he asked Herodia to ask whatever she wanted. Then Herod told this Salome to ask whatever she wanted. Even if it is half of his kingdom, he, Herod, will give her. Now, he Herod catch her in the Maybe. And to Herod's surprise, 
Of course, this Salome never thought that that was going to be uh, a request uh, from the father. So Salome went to the mother Herodian. What should I ask for? Enti ya ba ye ngama na die na papa bi sabi ye. We di ayem po frimu. Enti ya ba ye ko ni mame a oye Herod yire ni nchai ko bi san se mame ye. Se na papa ka chere me na me nka die. And the Bible said that that was to Herodia an opportune time. Na tro ni chira se Herodia we ni akwenya kese ya odi nyae. And then Herodia told the daughter ask for the head of John the Baptist. Na afa ohene yire Herodia ka chere ni baba Salome se ko ka chere wo papa se we hear Johannes boni ni ti. Ma remember that it was they were eating. It was a party. What does she need the head of John the Baptist for? Is she going to eat it? Na odwene ho a won ti ase ye. Eye ekono ne ato. Edidi ani edidi. Na Yohanna subo ni ti de. Wo hu ne sai apon ti ti ana. Ana wo hu ne sai odwan ti a. Odi beto fufu o so wa twen ho nkwai. Won ti ase ye. Because they serve with a platter or a tray. He says, ask of the head. Let them put it on a tray, a platter, and let them bring it to you. What say, Okwa, Momu, and Ketinenu, and see platter so, and see tense in Bimu, Nani Penyu, Sanya, you see some a whole war, Sanya, see the Niani Asumo, or Munjana Sapa Pepper. So just as they are taking the food around, she wants to display. Let the whole world know that she has killed John the Baptist. Let them put it on a platter. So that at least people will see the head of John the Baptist. No, it's not for Baya and Agnes and maybe way by Jimmy Dean. Maybe the Aquina by Jimmy Dean. Maybe we are seeing you know who say, Johannes Bonio, Johannes Bonino, me, my genuine coffin in some, Namitinity as he practices, Namadia Chini, Abbono, and couldn't come so beyond Rebbe. And that one was a request Herod never thought Salome would make. And the Bible says that he didn't know what to do, but he couldn't eat back his word because of his status. So he requested that they they brought the head of John the Baptist. When they brought the head to Salome. Salome also went to present to the mother. What is the what what is she going to do with the head? Na ebra ye twa tire yi to plate so ma Salome e no dan ho bo shi no de come ma ne ma me na mi bisa say ma me e tire yi o de be ye dey. You see wa hu this is the heart of bitterness. We ni akuma e diao Whoever thought that this woman, I mean, if you are the, 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 the wife of a great king in a banquet like this, but this time she is gorgeously dressed, very, very beautiful, but that is only the body inside her where was a filth of bitterness. She was a medra queen mother. Nanka akwenye ti say eni hie mu ti say ya topo no hene de aka wotena hwehwe ni mu a we make up cry one hour ahsesha won tade na ka obet na dwam na nsu we ni ahsesha de akire nyina achi no ni mudi e uhu na ni ma fefe fe na nsu ni mudi e boni fini ya wudi a ahsesha ni mu no e ye poto you can never tell a good person from the the, the food he eats you can never tell a good person from the dresses he or he wears. Not his stature. But a good man is the state of the heart. Now, what is the state of your heart? It is a heart that Jesus is after. I want you to let go any bitter spirit this afternoon. When you do that, you yourself, you'll be free. 
Not just free, you will be free indeed. Peter said to his audience in Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. When you repent and you give your heart to Jesus times of refreshing will come from the Lord. When we are talking about the Lord, we are talking about the owner of Ghana. I'm talking about the creator of the world. I'm not talking about the president of Ghana. I'm not talking about the Lord. And he knows what to do to you. And how to do it. The only thing he is requiring of you this afternoon. Is to repent. And turn to the Lord. Now verse 20 says this. And that he, that is Jesus. Or that is God may send the Messiah the deliverer the savior who has been appointed for you Jesus has been appointed for you he is your savior he is your deliverer he is your redeemer he is your rescue all he is requiring of you this afternoon is to repent from a bitter spirit. 